Hey guys, and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory, we're going to be talking about flight planning. Now, this may look like a lot of equations, but these are the ones you need to know to essentially pass the ATPL flight planning exam. Uh, they're also very useful for the day-to-day -day basis as well. Uh, let's first of all talk about point of equal time and point of safe return. Uh, there are many questions in your ATPL bank about these. So what is the point of equal time? Is a point between A and B where it will take equal time to go from A to a midpoint and turn back the same amount of time going to that midpoint and back. And what is the point of safe return? It's not necessarily equal in terms of time, but it's equal in terms of endurance, i.e. it takes into account how much fuel uh, we have on board. Why are these points important? In still air, the midpoint between A and B would be the point of equal time and the point of safe return, and the point of equal distance for that matter as well. However, if we had a headwind or a tailwind, and the stronger it is, the worse it would get, these points will move. If you imagine flying out from point A to point B with a very strong tailwind, we are going to be going very fast out. However, if we need to turn around at the midpoint, we would turn around and suddenly we'd be facing a huge headwind which would not get us back to our home base. So it's very important to calculate the point of equal time to know at which point we can turn around and it will be in the same amount of time home as it will outbound. These points move into the wind usually. So the stronger the wind is, the further towards the wind they will move. The speed distance time triangle. It's very important to know that triangle. This is all, including these ones at the bottom which I'll talk about later, these all come from essentially here. The triangle has distance, speed and time there and all you have to do is depending which figure you have, plop them into the triangle to see what the equation is. It is speed equals distance over time, distance equals speed times time and time equals distance over speed. So as you can see with these equations, there's distance and time equations for both the point of equal time and the point of safe return. Before we start talking about the formulas themselves, you need to know in all these formulas, especially in the TPL exams, you will need to calculate with a CR3, CRP5, whatever you use, the headwind and tailwind components. So you'll be given a heading, a wind vector, a wing strength, calculate the headwind, tailwind, and then you can work out your ground speed outbound and your ground speed home. So distance to the point of equal time. Well, that is the total distance times the ground speed home, that's the ground speed we've calculated that we would be coming back at, divided by the ground speed out plus the ground speed home. So you do that divided by that. Now, in the ATPL exams, say you're given work out the time to the point of equal time, you need to work out the distance to work out the time, because you need distance to work out a time. You're given a speed, you, know, you can work out your speeds easily in all these formulas by working out your head and your tailwind. So to work out the time to the point of equal time, we need to know the distance and the speed. We've calculated the distance previously, so we pop that into the formula, divide it by the speed out in this case, and we would get the time to that middle point. Those two are for the point of equal time, these two are for the point of safe return. They're very similar and they follow a very similar structure. To calculate the time in this case now, uh, we are always dividing the two big formulas by the ground speed out plus the ground speed home. This is because it gives us a mathematical average. Speak to a mathematician if you want to know more how that works. But that is essentially an average of the speed because you're incorporating a speed home there in both these equations. You need to divide it by the total speed essentially. So time to the point of safe return is going to equal endurance because now we're talking time relates to endurance. Endurance is the number of hours we know that we have with the fuel that we have on board. Endurance times the ground speed out this time, not the distance, divided by the ground speed out plus the ground speed home, and that will give us time. Once we have our time to the point of safe return, we can now work out our distance, because we have to incorporate that time which we just worked out into the distance formula. So distance to the point of safe return is the time to the point of safe return times the ground speed out. In this case, it's times, not divided. That's how you remember. Remember the triangle and you will know. If you're working out a distance, you know it's going to be speed times time. That's that. If you're working out time, you know it's going to be divided, distance over speed. At least that's how I remember them. Do a few exercises on them. You'll find it's very straightforward. First of all, when I see one of these questions, calculate the headwind, calculate the tailwind component. So you calculate your ground speed out and your ground speed home. And then it's just plopping the figures into the formulas. So I hope that helps with point of equal time, point of safe return. If you're ever struggling to remember if I'm dividing or multiplying, remember your triangle. A few other formulas which are very handy in flight planning, but also in other subjects such as principles of flight, are these three that I've put on the bottom here. The first formula is Mach equals TAS over the local speed of sound. That is a very useful one. It doesn't only serve to work out the Mach, but of course you can flip these round and work out the TAS. They will either give you the local speed of sound or you have to work it out. How do we work out the speed of sound? 
Very straightforward actually. We know it only varies with temperature, so it will normally give you the outside temperature reading of the aircraft. And the local speed of sound is 39, which is just a variable. It's actually 38.8 something. Square root of C, temperature in centigrade, which we all know, plus 273. Why 273? Because this formula for the local speed of sound actually works from Kelvin, from the temperature in Kelvin, is negative 273, absolute zero. Yeah, I tend to just remember this formula and replace local speed of sound with that. So I just remember one formula. Uh, and the last one is nautical air miles. I've seen a few questions on that. Very useful formula to know. So how many nautical air miles will we fly? It's not the same as nautical miles, because a nautical mile would be over the ground. However, if we have a strong headwind, we are going to be flying more air miles than we would ground miles. And vice versa, if we had a strong tailwind, we would fly more nautical miles than we would air miles. So you work out this by first calculating how many nautical miles times your TAS, true airspeed, divided by the ground speed. Best advice I can give you, go and do a few examples. You'll get into the habit of them, you'll understand them. Remember the speed distance time formula triangle there, that helps a lot. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. All the best, till next time.